Hello, everybody. I think we're coming coming to you live on this great Thursday. We'll give it a just a quick minute, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So, hello. I uh, hope you're all having a great Thursday. My name is DJ Wright, and I'm uh, our investment manager for Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group. And we wanted to take a few minutes to discuss these markets and this incredible year that we're having. And it keeps getting better. So it's, you know, it's amazing how quickly things can change from one year to the next. But that's really how the, the markets work. You know, nothing ever stays constant forever. There's always things changing. Just when you feel like it's not going to change, it does. So as you all know, last year was a really tough year for investors. You know, stocks went through a bear market. Uh, bonds also really struggled. They had their worst year ever uh, with all the, the rising rates. And all the while, inflation was extremely high, topping out at around 9% at one point. So here we are, you know, end of July in 2023. Um, about halfway through, a little more than halfway through the year, and things have been completely different. You know, the stock market entered a new bull market officially last month, uh, and inflation has come way down. You know, you can really feel the difference and see the difference, you know, just all over on the media, social media, the news, you know, it's just like everywhere you look, even just talking to people, there's a, a less fear, less uncertainty. And people are starting to feel much more optimistic uh, about the stock market and the future. And rightfully so. So we now know that the S&P 500 hit its bear market low, uh, its low point in October of last year. And since then, it's rallied more than 20%, again, officially entering a new bull market. So, so far this year, the year-to-date gains have been 18% uh, for the S&P 500. Uh, we've had 6.4% for the Dow Jones and 34% for the tech-heavy NASDAQ. A lot of growth companies in that, in that uh, index. The Dow Jones actually posted 13 straight positive days up until today. It was down today. Uh, but those 13 days were the best winning streak since 1987. That's, I mean, that's incredible. If it had stayed positive today and then actually hit another positive day tomorrow, I believe it might have been the longest streak ever. Uh, so we didn't get it, but that's okay. I mean, it, it just shows you that uh, these markets are strong. They're posting very impressive gains. And so, you know, why are we seeing this kind of growth. A big reason is cooling inflation. So I'm just going to focus on the United States here. Uh, but last summer, we saw inflation at 9% year over year. I mean, it, that, is, that is so high. Um, you know, I think we've all really been able to see that, you know, we feel the prices increasing, you know, you go to the grocery store and each time you go, things are more expensive. So, I mean, it's been, it's, it's significant and very noticeable. Uh, well, we're now down closer to the 3% range. Um, and you can see here the, the CPI, which is the, the inflation, you know, reader, our, our forecast is 3.8% uh, for this year. So, Again, much, much better than where we were last year. Still above the Fed's 2% target, but again, huge improvements. You know, a little inflation is good. It means that we are growing, um, that the economy is moving forward, but too much is very, very bad. We do want price stability. And so this, uh, this reduction in inflation has taken a lot of pressure off the stock market especially a lot of these growth and tech stocks that are very sensitive to inflation and interest rates. Uh, so that's why you saw the NASDAQ up almost 35%. You know, note that last year it was down a whole lot too. So you know, it had had more room to go than say the Dow Jones, but those, those types of stocks are very sensitive to, to higher inflation. And so cooling inflation has helped this market run quite a lot. 
Uh, we've also been able to bring down inflation without slowing the economy too much. So remember that the Fed has been raising rates for the last year and a half, trying to slow down the economy. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're walking a tightrope where they want to slow the economy down to get inflation down, but not too much that we enter recession. So it's a, it, it's a tough job that they have. Uh, but so far, they've made great progress on inflation, and we have not entered a recession. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of positives there. Uh, you know, you can see here unemployment, it's currently at 3.6%. Our forecast is that it'll end the year at 3.7%. Uh, but if you want a job right now, most people can find one. And unemployment is a great indicator of a recession. You know, when we are going through a recession, usually unemployment's quite high. And so, you know, we just haven't seen that increase uh, really at all. We've also seen really great uh, corporate earnings that are coming in better than expectations. Things have slowed down a bit, but they're beating the expectations, which Wall Street always loves that. Um, GDP has also held up very, very strong. So we actually received a big number uh, today for the second quarter and it, the GDP, which is our gross domestic product, kind of shows our economic out, uh, output. Uh, it grew at 2.4%, which was well above the 1.8% um, expectation. So our forecast for the year is, is a 1.2% growth. Now it's still very uncertain whether we will see a recession or not. And you know, a lot of times when the Fed raises rates, the effects can be lagged. And so we're, you know, we'll still wait to see what happens and what kind of effects the overall economy has. Um, there's likely going to be a slowdown with these higher rates. Um, but if we do get a recession, uh, we do expect it to be very mild and nothing like 2008. Um, although it's, you know, I will say that it's becoming more and more likely that we don't get a recession and they may be able to do that soft landing that you've probably heard about where the Fed again can get inflation under control without tipping us into recession. So we'll wait and see. Another positive for the stock market is the Fed is uh, likely almost done with raising rates. So just yesterday, we saw another quarter point uh, rate hike, uh, which was completely expected. I mean, that's, we essentially knew they were going to do that. Um, so no surprises there. But they did you know, hint at a potential one at their next meeting in September. Uh, they're really, the Fed is data dependent right now. So you know, we'll see what kind of numbers we get for inflation um, you know, over the next month. Uh, so again, we, we don't know what they'll do next month, but we're very certain that they're near the end. Whether they've hit it yesterday or they do one more rate hike, we know they're very close uh, to the end. Um, and when you look at periods of aggressive rate hikes, like we've seen over the last year and a half, I mean, that's a headwind for stocks and bonds. Um, so knowing that it's almost complete has really helped push the markets along as well. So where do we go from here? Let's talk about the outlook for stocks. So first of all, no one knows what the stock market's going to do in the short term, right? Nobody can predict these things. Uh, but we, you know, we can look at history, and it does paint a pretty good picture. So when you take the date that we reached a 20% gain uh, from a bear market low, stock market gains have been positive a majority of the time. So we hit this low. Uh, back in October, that was the low point. And then we uh, hit the 20% gain off of that low in early June. So looking out three months from that date, we've seen an average gain of 5.1%. And again, this is on top of the 20% that, you know, that we just, that we already saw. So an additional gain of 5.1%. And markets were positive 83% of the time. So pretty good chance that it's positive. Uh, looking six months out, the average gain has been 12.7%, and we've been positive 75% of the time. And when you look one year out, the average gain has been about 19%, and uh, markets were positive 91% of the time. So, you know, this tells us that there could be more gains ahead. You know, markets like to build on top of each other. So there's, you know, history uh, is promising for where we're at right now. 
Uh, what about bonds? So bonds had the worst year on record last year. It was the worst year. And they're usually your safe haven investment for when stocks are struggling, you have your bonds to, to lean on. And we didn't see that last year. So it was, it was an especially tough year for investors. Um, you know, with rates coming up the way that they did, uh, it caused existing bond prices to go down. Um, that's how they, it works. You know, interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship. So again, like we just talked about, we know that the Fed is just about done uh, raising rates. When we look at past times that the Fed has paused uh, its rate hiking, bonds have done very well um, coming off of that. On average, we've seen bonds gain 8% for the six months after the Fed pauses. Uh, they've gained an average of 13% one year later. And then a gain of 10% annualized over the next three years has been the average. And you can see all these times here where, again, the Fed has raised rates. And I mean, it's, it's pretty good numbers for all these. So again, coming off a tough year, um, this could be a good setup for your bonds. So a lot of people got tired of them last year. They said, you know what, I'm not doing bonds. You know, I, I, would, I wouldn't go there. Um, you know, there, there could be some good stuff for those. And if you're, you know, with new money, if you're just investing in bonds, uh, I mean, it's really great timing for you because whereas, uh, you know, two years ago, interest rates were really low. So you couldn't get paid all that much with your bonds. Well, now they've come up. So they're finally paying good interest with these higher rates. So that is a, a good thing if you're looking to get into bonds. So, you know, the last thing I want to say is, you know, how important it is to keep a long-term perspective with your investments. You know, don't get caught up in all the volatility um, or the headlines. I know it's easier said than done. It can definitely be very scary. And, you know, in the short term, markets can be volatile. I mean, we've seen that a lot lately. You know, since COVID, you know, we've seen big swings with the with the markets and that can be very scary. You know, it, it, I, we totally understand that. Um, but what history tells us is that if you do stick with your strategy uh, and you think longer term, you are rewarded. And longer term can be, you know, it doesn't have to be a 20 year period. It's let's think over a couple of years rather than just the what's happening right now. You know, think about how scary the market seemed at the end of last year and look at where we are now, you know, totally different. Uh, remember the bank crisis earlier this year. So we've, you know, we've essentially moved past that. Uh, remember the debt ceiling? That was, just, you know, that wasn't too long ago either. Uh, and it was all over the news. And it really spooked uh, people, but you know, it was a, just another headline that we navigated and moved past. So, you know, there's always going to be something, always going to be something that people are fearful of, that the media is kind of zoning in on. Uh, but if you're well diversified with your investments and you stick with your strategy, you know, you'll set yourself up for success. So again, sometimes it's easier said than done, but that's what we're here for to help you with that. We understand that this is um, sometimes a different world and, a, and a, it can be an emotional deal investing. And so if you ever wanna chat about what's going on in the economy or what's going on in the markets, that's what we're here for. Kind of throw these important disclosures out really quickly. But um, anyways, that's what I have for you guys today. Just a quick market update, but we wanted to at least talk to you since it's been, a, been an exciting year so far. And we'll, uh, we're here, here for you anytime you need, and we'll see what the rest of this year has in store for us. So thank you, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye.